Good morning, you're still on the Friday edition of The Breakfast Show. This is the Tina EU radio program. My name is Clotilda Kachengela Piri. My guest this morning is Eva Staminova, Programs Manager at the from the EU delegation. It's good to have you on The Breakfast Show on this segment today. Good morning, Clotilda. It's nice to be here with you today. Great. So it's Tina EU, and our topic for this morning is how can climate smart agriculture support Zambia with regards to food security? That's what we're looking at uh, for the next 15 minutes or so. So to begin our discussion, uh, kindly explain to us uh, what the EU for Mulimi uh, program uh, is all about. Uh, thank you, Clotilde. That's actually the um, uh, the question we always wanted to explain uh, because it's a new uh, it's a new brand, as we will say, yes. to the program that the EU is currently implementing. But it started basically from 2019, and our main objective was to support smallholder farmers and to integrate them in uh, market sustainable and climate resilient value chains while looking at few aspects uh, once it's uh, around adopting uh, climate smart agricultural practices to adopt also water conservation practices but at the same time looking at the nutrition because nutrition here is important that uh, not only farmers produce a nutritious food for the population but they also have an alternative uh, nutritious food that they can also feed uh, their families uh, and provide for uh, their neighbors and of course, one last aspect, which is the most uh, popular one, I will say, in Zambia, is our access to finance and mm -hmm. the private sector development program, where we offer grants to agribusinesses with the aim of integrating those smallholder farmers and providing for them secured markets. Mm -hmm. So that's the big program that the EU is currently implementing, and we call it EU for Mulin. Indeed. When you speak of uh, the climate smart agriculture, what exactly does it entail? Kindly break it down for us. Well, when we talk about climate smart agriculture, it's in fact in there are different techniques uh, that uh, can be applied by the farmers. This means mainly to um, help them uh, manage uh, soil fertility, to avoid soil erosion, mm -hmm. uh, land management, to avoid degradation of land, but also making use of uh, what is available in the nature. Uh, we can do also agroforestry agriculture with forest and it's not necessary to cut down the forest mm -hmm. actually the forest can be in uh, helping the uh, the agricultural sector uh, because there is biodiversity we need uh, bees for pollinating and uh, and so on so these are different techniques that are applied where uh, the use of chemicals and fertilizers uh, are reduced uh, techniques like intercropping uh, like mulching, like use of uh, composts, are all things that are out there in the nature. Plants uh, support each other in a different ways. So uh, this is basically one of the few things that Climate Smart Agriculture talks about, conservation agriculture. And it's all about for resilience uh, of the, uh, the smallholders, so that their, uh, first of all, harvest is not lost but that they increase their yields and hopefully increase incomes. Indeed. Um, the EU did adopt a growth strategy that they're calling the Green Deal. How does it play into the, smile, uh, the climate smart agriculture strategy? Uh, well, you know, the European Green Deal was adopted uh, when actually the global pandemic, COVID-19 uh, outbreak uh, started, when we saw that uh, we cannot continue business as usual so what the European Green Deal was adopted about was to actually boost this efficient use of resources mm -hmm. that are out there. And uh, we had the European Union has the ambitions to be the, uh, the first climate uh, neutral continent by 2015 by exactly doing investments in, uh, for example, uh, doing climate smart agriculture, reduce use of antibiotics, for example, in, in livestock, uh, reversing loss of biodiversity, uh, specifically if we talk about fisheries and uh, ocean aquaculture. Um, so this is one better use even of energy and reuse of energy and uh, promote circularity in, in the economy. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, the European Green Deal actually wants to 
to boost this transformation of the current economy and growing more to, to green, as we say, to use more what nature provides for us. I like that. I know that the focus is uh, mainly on smallholder farmers, but I would like to shift away a little bit from our, 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 the outline that we're following and talk about the issue of women, because I know that women play a key role in issues of agriculture, especially in our rural areas. They're the ones that are fending for their families. How involved are they um, in these uh, projects uh, to do with climate smart agriculture? Well, I thank you for this question, because in fact, uh, uh, women are the ones working in agriculture. I must say they are the um, the ones that are working in the field. Uh, they're the ones that are very receptive to to learn and to apply new technologies. Uh, I would say they're the ones that makes the most savings in the families, so that uh, when the next season comes and when the school fees needs to be paid, mm -hmm. uh, they're the ones that uh, yes, they can come up uh, with the cash and say there it is. Uh, so uh, their role is uh, very critical in the agricultural sector. It's a bit of pity, I would say, that uh, policies and uh, different instruments don't really recognize uh, their role. So in our program, uh, I would say that uh, they're our key partners. Uh, you will see that most of... Uh, in, we have a CFAS program, the SUN2 program, uh, and aware uh, women are even more active. They're 60% more involved than, than men. Uh, of course, I don't want to undermine the men's role, <laughs> but uh, what is interesting is that our project, in fact, uh, target uh, our uh, beneficiaries, women and men, like a unit, because the family supports each other. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's not that the women is to be sitting at home uh, looking after the children, uh, no, they're actually very good in uh, in business, in sales. So uh, the husband can be the one look after when the, the woman goes and sells and brings the profit. Mm -hmm. So these are shared tasks that we try to promote in our programs and to give opportunities for women and youth also to get more involved in the sector. All right. This is the TINA EU segment on our breakfast show. Do stay tuned as we continue to talk about Climate Smart agriculture in Zambia. Stay tuned. You're still on the TNA EU radio segment on The Breakfast Show and we continue to talk about climate smart agriculture with my guest Eva Stamenova. Program Manager, EU Delegation, and at this point I'd like to find out uh, what results uh, smallholder farmers should expect uh, with the implementation of Climate Smart um, Agriculture Approach as opposed to, you know, the other uh, alternative. Well, for example, this year I would say our um, uh, CFAS project that is uh, helping a lot uh, smallholders to adopt new, uh, I would say new tech. They are not really new technologies. They are simply technologies that are not applied uh, that extensively in Zambia. Mm -hmm. uh, but for example, this year all the farmers were happy because they they could uh, apply those uh, techniques like uh, intercropping and mulching and even going for uh, uh, organic agriculture. And they say that their uh, yields have increased uh, and also their costs for production have uh, have decreased. Because when we talk, for example, for organic agriculture, there is not mm -hmm. that much need to use chemicals, not at all. And you also look at when you have to, uh, to spray or if you don't have to spray. So the cost of uh, production are, are uh, very much lower. And we all know that currently price of fertilizers uh, is growing, going up. So uh, our farmers actually were very pleased with the, this year uh, harvest. So mm -hmm. I'm sure that they'll continue applying these practices for the next agricultural season. How can we then ensure, uh, because you did mention that these practices or techniques are not exactly new, so how can we ensure that smallholder farmers are implementing these uh, strategies extensively or as they should be? We are working currently with the Ministry of Agriculture because the CFAS project is, a, is an applied research and development project. So we were doing the trials in the past years so we have documented uh, our results. So now we look we, uh, work with Zari and we will, uh, once everything is documented well and scientifically proven, 
we are planning to institutionalize these practices and uh, make this as uh, small booklets that can be easily distributed to farmers in, uh, in any local language in an understandable way so that they can continue applying them even after the project is, has ended. Do you think that the Zambian um, agriculture sector is ready for this change? Well, I think uh, that in the past, uh, because climate smart agriculture technique is not new to Zambia, mm -hmm. but its uptake was a bit slow in, in last years. Uh, but I think that now with the current um, climate change, uh, farmers get more and more convinced uh, that this adaptation that needs to be done is actually in their benefit. And I find that uh, they're more and more uh, going into, into, this, uh, into this practice. Of course, any, any type of uh, agriculture smart uh, practices requires sometimes small scale machinery. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is something that we, with the Ministry of Agriculture, are work, uh, working on. It's to make a new mechanization strategy and think about how smallholder farmers can get uh, easy access to small scale machinery that can help them to work in, in their fields. Okay. On previous episodes, we've talked a lot about um, the Enterprise Zambia Challenge. Um, just kindly bring us up to speed with what this is all about, um, with focus this time around on the production of organic soybeans. Yes, the uh, Enterprise Zambia Challenge Fund uh, is actually a challenge fund to agribusinesses that uh, they also don't do business as usual, but uh, try to, to bridge a gap that is at the market. But at the same time, uh, we challenge them to, to think a bit outside the box, uh, how they can integrate smallholders into value chains, mm -hmm. uh, how they can also provide extension services uh, to them, while uh, hopefully, and we think that they will achieve that, uh, paying them good prices for mm -hmm. their produce and uh, offering them uh, really sustainable uh, formal markets. Uh, we do this through uh, COFR proposals. So we have companies that are applying to us. Uh, some say that it's a very tough uh, competition, yeah. uh, but the companies we have awarded have really uh, show a great commitment to, to the integration of smallholders. So we have a um, few uh, organic uh, projects, uh, which we are proud of. One is on cotton and one is on, on soya. Uh, the one maybe on soya that um, you were referring to, with the uh, 260 brand yes. uh, and Cassisi training uh, agricultural training center. Uh, they're both implementing this growing of uh, organic uh, soya. And uh, maybe recently on TV also, we could have seen uh, how women farmers are saying that how happy they are with the low cost of production, that they never thought that uh, this is also another way of, uh, of doing things. And uh, the good thing is that the weeding of, uh, of soya has always been uh, very burdensome work for women. And now they say with these practices, they, they see the benefit of, of that for, for themselves and they have more time to do, to do other, other tasks. So what we, uh, what we expect from this, from this project, and I think is also the expectation of two, 260 brand themselves, it's to really continuing uh, with the soya production, but uh, paying the farmers this premium uh, between conventional agriculture and organic, because organic agriculture always brings a premium to the farmer. And uh, this is a product that is largely seeked into the international markets. Mm -hmm. And we hope that in the long term, Zambia will become one of the greatest exporters. As we, uh, before we go, as we close, I'd like us now to focus on the viability of organic farm farming, especially for smallholder farmers. Well, it's uh, at the beginning, uh, I'll be honest, it may sound difficult mm -hmm. uh, because uh, farmers, um, I like uh, this, I read it in one blog that uh, a fellow farmer was saying, we farmers are very stubborn and we like to do our, uh, the ways we were thought by our uh, uh, parents mm -hmm. and we are very difficult to change and uh, this this uh, requires uh, organic agriculture requires persistence yes. uh, requires uh, commitment and uh, dedication a lot of uh, searching for information and there are organizations like a CC agricultural training center that provides such kind of trainings and they have very nice booklets uh, 
mm-hmm. that can provide this knowledge and also support to farmers that want to endeavor into 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 that i i say to them uh, don't give up may sound that it's difficult but you see that uh, the results will be uh, excellent thank you so much for uh, making an appearance on this uh, edition of uh, tina eu on our breakfast show thank you very much Great. I've been talking to Eva Standanova, Programs Manager at the EU Delegation. That's from the EU Delegation uh, on this edition of Tea Na EU. My name is Clotilda Kachenjala Piri. Thank you so much for listening.